Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What up? What up? What up, man? I appreciate y'all checking me out. I know I ain't really dropped no content in a while. Um, a lot of things going on, different life events. And then I got a nine to five. You know what I'm saying? So it ain't really easy to navigate through all of that. But, you know, also, man, I lost my uh, I lost my flash drive, man, that had a, a Final Cut Pro on there. So now I'm just trying to figure out, you know, um, I guess how I'm going to start uh, posting content. Came across this little trial on StreamYard. I guess we'll see what we're talking about, see what it's talking about. Anyway, though, I just wanted to kind of get in here right quick, real quick, and talk about the Detroit Pistons. Um, they had a great draft, the moves leading up to the draft. It was a lot of things, uh, a lot of things being said about what was going to happen with Jeremy Grant. And um, they made a trade, essentially, like the, the headline for the trade was Jeremy Grant for – a 20 uh, a 2025 first round pick from the Milwaukee Bucks and we made that trade took Jeremy Grant shipped him off for that pick and we took the pick and we essentially turned that into uh Jalen Duran now two first round picks couldn't really ask for a better scenario out of that uh I think a lot of people kind of had Jeremy Grant overvalued I don't think he was overvalued I think that I think the move really worked well for both teams. Maybe not so much Portland, because um, I, I don't know why they would try to. You got to you just got to hit the reset button on that over there in Portland. Bringing in, I think they drafted Shaden Sharp, a guy who has never even played a college game. Um, so I, I can't really imagine that turning out too well for what they're trying to do with Damian Lillard. But whatever the case may be, we're talking about the Detroit Pistons now. This move keeps them from. First of all, they opened up $40 million worth of cap space. I think they had the most cap space uh, going into free agency, which I don't really necessarily think they should do anything. I think the acquisition of Jalen Duran and Jaden Ivey, again, great draft. I don't think they necessarily needed to bring in a veteran guard after that. I don't think they necessarily need to go after DeAndre Ayton. Now, when you look at it, they got, uh, they got Duran, they got Jalen Duran. They got Marvin Bagley. They got Isaiah Stewart. They still have Kelly Olenek on, over there on the roster too, man. So, you know, they got a lot of things to work with over there. Um, we got we got uh, Kimball Walker. We got Kimball Walker in that in that trade, which I, I, I believe that that was just a move to open up more cap space. It's been reported by Woj that the Pistons and Kimball Walker are expected to um, agree to a buyout. Now – don't be surprised. Don't be surprised if the Lakers end up going after Kimball Walker in some desperate ass move. All right. They definitely need to do something. But all in all, I, I really just wanted to come on here and talk about the direction of the Detroit Pistons. I'm, I'm very proud. I'm very excited. With all that money that they opened up, they could possibly go after Miles Bridges. Now, I think Detroit wins that. I don't think Miles does. I think that. You know, in, in light of recent things that that's going on around Miles Bridges, I don't know what the young dude is going through. I really like Miles. I love Miles. Dude who can get buckets. Not really a floor spreader, but man, he he bring a lot of he fill a lot of seats over there in Detroit. Over here in Detroit, man, they um they could use they could use more young talent. Um, great talent, great veteranship. Again, not the best shooter, but his everything else that he brings to the table. Detroit could definitely uh, use, especially after trading away Jeremy Grant. We could use a little bit of help on the wing position. So let's not be surprised if they go after, let's not be surprised if they go after uh, my man Miles Bridges here. I would love to see him come. I think it helped Detroit a whole lot. I just, I'm just not really sure what it does for Miles. You know what I mean? I, I don't, I'm just not really sure what happens with Miles and that whole little situation with him. But, all in all, again, I think the direction of the Detroit Pistons is going really well, man. I would not be surprised. I think they, I think they are playing team hands down. I don't even think it's a question about that. I think they, uh, I think they are a playing team. 
just me getting used to the camera, man. You feel me? Y'all see the, I don't know the direction to put the guns in, but whatever the case may be, though, I think Detroit Pistons are a are, are really good, really good lock to, to be a play-in team next year. Don't be surprised if we if we can make a free agent acquisition and now we and now we looking at you know, possibly being a, a top six team in the East next year. I, I don't know. It's a lot of competition coming to the East. We got to see what happened. But again, with the right free agent acquisition, I, I don't. I don't personally think that the Pistons should go spend no money. I think they're in really good position. I don't really think it's a lot of. I don't really think it's no big, no free agents worth really spending that money on. If I was the Pistons, if I did spend the money, it would have been on DeAndre Ayton. I like Jalen Brunson. I do not think that he is the guy you should bring in, especially if we're talking about paying $30, $35 million a year. I'm just not with that one. I think DeAndre Ayton was a more pressing need, but again, they filled that need in the draft. And that's really what I like. Yeah, I like I like what Troy Weaver is over here doing. Really seemed like he making good decisions as a general manager. And the team is just looking. We got a real bright future ahead of us, you know, if we can just keep things up. And I really think that um, Dwayne Casey will be able to really showcase his development abilities because that's kind of something that's under the radar as far as I'm concerned. I think that a lot of a lot of a lot of fans, Pistons fans in general, a lot of people kind of sleeping on Dwayne Casey and what he's been able to do. Maybe if you caught one of my earlier videos about the Detroit Pistons, I kind of talked about Dwayne Casey and his his uh, reputation as developing or reputation with developing younger players rather and what he was able to do over there with Toronto, whether he got fired or not, whether he should have been fired or not. It's a whole nother conversation. All in all, though, man, very proud of what Detroit got going on. I just wanted to drop in here and give you all my 10 cents and uh, be looking out for more content. I got another show, another channel dropping. We're going to try to be a little more um, active. I say it's going to be a little more personality to it, um, trying to have more of me, trying to give you all more of me and and not just me, but the people, you know, the people that I had these basketball conversations with, you know, so that's just me, man. I'm signing out. I'll catch you all next time. Peace.